Uh, thank you everyone for coming to our session. I'm Philip with AWS Marketplace. Um, I know many of you had to choose us over an early lunch or maybe choose us over an early happy hour, so well done. That is good. So we're going to cover a few things in this session today. Uh, we're going to cover the challenges with vendor risk assessment that I think many of us are familiar with. I'll then bring up Sai, who's our product manager, who owns this product for us. Um, he'll also do a demo for you. And then we're very lucky to have Brian Webster, who's a vice president at Trend Micro, coming up to show you how they handle vendor risk assessment today. And that'll be the, the wrap up. So why are we talking today? Uh, we did a lot of research on this one. And the way we did that was we spoke to dozens of customers. We surveyed hundreds of customers. And we asked them what kind of challenges they faced in procurement. And top of that list was this vendor risk assessment process. And so the biggest challenge that they sort of mentioned to us is in this world of cloud software, in the world of SaaS, vendor risk assessment has become more important, not less important. In the old days, you could deploy a, a virtual machine or an AMI or a piece of software into your uh, internal network. And if you didn't trust it, you could firewall that off or put it in your DMZ, and you could sort of mitigate some of that risk. With SaaS, you can't do that. You have to trust the vendor more. And what that means is more questionnaires and more interrogation of that software. The problem with more questionnaires and longer questionnaires is it takes longer. So when you have developers desperate to start a new project and they rely upon a piece of third-party software and it takes longer, those developers find ways around this. They start bypassing you. They go buy the software with their credit card. And that, that introduces more risk, not reduces risk. And across the board, you know, customers have told us that they really are struggling with this and they want help. So how are we going to sort of jump into that more? So there's two sides to this. The, the first side is the buyer. So there's buyers who want to buy software. They want to buy it quicker, as quickly as possible. And they want to be able to trust that software. And so what we heard from customers was it takes about three months. In fact, Sai and I had dinner last night with a customer. And they were very happy to reveal it took them two months. And that's not nearly fast enough. In the speed of cloud, you want to get this down to days, if not hours, as fast as possible. The second problem they sort of face with is the effort. If you can't walk into the AWS data center and check that that ISV is doing what they say they're doing, how do you validate? Well, the way you do that is by asking lots and lots of questions. So if you want to know if they're encrypting data, you send them a questionnaire with hundreds of questions. And then they say they're encrypting data. You ask them follow-up questions. And you keep digging deeper and deeper to try and figure out, can you catch them out? Or are they telling the truth? It's very hard to audit in this day and age. The validation piece, uh, that's questionnaires. In the speed of cloud, I cannot imagine we want to introduce more paperwork. You want less paperwork. And so questionnaires with hundreds of questions are a bad way to evaluate. And we want to, as much as possible, automate that. There'll always be a place for questionnaires. But where we can automate, where we can validate, we want to do that. And the really bad news is once you've gone through and you know, done the questionnaire and spent your months answering questions, you're not finished. You want to figure out, hey, what's changed since the last time we evaluated you? So every year, you send new questionnaires and create more and more work. That The customer last night, for their top products, they evaluate quarterly. So that's four 900 question questionnaires every year for a single product when most customers have hundreds, if not thousands of products. So it's a massive burden on the, the buyer. On the seller, it's not much better. You know, ISVs, sellers, vendors, you know, they've invested lots and lots in their security posture. You know, we have partners like Trend Micro or Security Scorecard that have a very strong security story, and you want a way to represent that to your customers as quickly and easily as possible. So how do they do it? Well, they also have teams of humans that spend their entire day answering questions. It doesn't sound like the most fun job, but it's a really, really important job because you have to build that trust. They also, the, the sellers also invest in you know, audits. So SOC 2 or ISO 27001, and those are expensive and they're slow. The average cost of a SOC 2 audit is $60,000. And your customer doesn't want one that's five years old. They want one from this year. So there's an additional cost in addition to all those humans answering questions. And again, they have to do this quarterly, if not annually. 
So I'm going to bring Sai up here to talk about how we're solving this problem. But it's a problem we've heard from every single customer and every single seller that they want help with this. And AWS Vendor Insights is going to help us address that. Awesome. Thank you, Philip. Can you give me a thumbs up if you're able to hear me well? Awesome, great. I'm glad to be here. I'm glad to see you all. I hope you're enjoying the reinforce as much as I am. Uh, I'm not only happy that I get to get on stage and present the work that my team has been working on for 15 months now. Uh, I was actually glad to be here in person because this is my first event after I think close to three years and I got to meet with a lot of old colleagues of mine. You know, I was with a cloud security startup before and uh, I ran into my partner in crime. Uh, he and I used to work on uh, deals together and uh, together we closed our first six figure deal, then our first seven figure deal and we almost made it to eight figures and we fell short by two million. And uh, we were having a conversation about what this uh, vendor insights does for him. And I told him, remember the time in 2017 where he was trying to close that first big name customer and he was upset that you know, he had to wait two months after the customer told him that they want to buy the product, but they had to get the approvals. And uh, he was pretty upset because the two months delayed his whole kitchen remodeling because he didn't get his commission check. And I told him, hey, if you had vendor insights, you could have remodeled the kitchen sooner. So uh, I joke about the kitchen remodeling, but the important thing was customer really wanted to buy your product because uh, the security product helped them meet their PCI compliance. And that compliance was due in four months. And this two months was taken away uh, because of the approval process. But the approval process is really important. So the goal with vendor insights is how do we make that important process faster so that customers can get to it. The reason why it took us two months to get that deal was the fact that this was a big, first big name customer and we being a small startup, were not prepared for it. You know, when they sent us that 300 question questionnaire, like we had to run around, you know, uh, meet with different people from different teams trying to gather the answers. Over time, we did get better at this. Uh, you know, we started documenting our responses in a question bank so that, you know, we could copy paste the response. But what that still meant was, you know, whenever we got a questionnaire from the customers, you know, we had to copy paste. And there were times where I was stuck in office copy pasting when my counterparts were in customer dinners eating amazing steak. And if you know anything at all, you know, anything that comes between me and a free steak, that's a problem worth solving. So, so that's when I started taking it personally. And when I joined AWS uh, and especially AWS Marketplace, this problem came up again and again. And a lot of customers let us know that, you know, like Marketplace makes it super easy for them to uh, swipe a card and buy a product. But that's the final step. There's a whole approval step that needs to be done before that. And that was causing delays. So uh, they repeated the word manual and repetitive often in those conversations. I don't know if you had any experience with AWS, uh, but you know, if you repeat the word manual and repetitive three times, an AWS product manager will show up in front of you and he'll try to build a service out of it. And that's what I tried to do. But I was told, no, we already have 200 services. Let's not build a new service, but this is an important customer problem to solve. So let's solve for it. And that's how we ended up with building a new solution into AWS Marketplace. And I think that's a great place for us because we have over 300,000 customers using AWS Marketplace today to discover new products, procure them, and deploy them. We have over 12,000 partners who have listed their products. And as I mentioned before, we make it easy for them to procure this product uh, and make the transaction faster. But now with Vendor Insights, we are making it easier for them to complete the pre-procurement assessment as well as the post-procurement assessment. So what is Vendor Insights? But to put it simply, it's an online dashboard which has security and compliance information for the products. This is associated with the product marketplace listing. So when customers are looking to discover a product that not only meets their business needs, but also their certification needs, they can come to Marketplace now, use this information to search and discover a product that meets their certification requirements. The dashboard also comes with 140 security and compliance information built in. It's not only information, but it's rather evidence back information. So, you know, when you're doing your, when the customer is doing the validation, they have the evidences right there on the dashboard 
to complete the validation and speed up the assessments. The final piece is that all of this 140 controls, whenever there's a change in any of those things, both customers and partners get notified. So instead of the annual audits where you're, you're assessing your vendor what's changed, now we get proactive notification to stay on top of what's changed. A critical part of this and something that's unique about Vendor Insights is the fact that the 140 controls that we have on our dashboard has evidence associated with it. So what do we mean by that? So each of those controls, let's take an example of you know, whether the data is encrypted. So traditionally, you would send out a questionnaire asking the question, is the data encrypted? And somebody from the compliance team or the security team on the vendor side would respond saying, here is how we encrypt the data. With vendor insights, we gather the response, but we go beyond that. If the vendor has completed uh, ISO or software certification, they've spent hundreds of thousands of dollars working with an auditor you know, who's verified whether those controls are implemented. So we look into those reports. We check whether, what, what did auditor find when they check for this control. We see whether the auditor has noted that the controls are fully implemented or partially implemented with exceptions or not implemented. Whatever we find, we'll bring that to the dashboard so that you as a customers don't have to spend time processing those reports. The challenge with the audit reports is that at best, these are annual audits. And we at AWS think we can do better. And that's where you know, we have built deep integrations with uh, our partners to have automated assessments turned on on the production accounts. So using AWS Config and AWS Audit Manager services, we're able to pull in the latest security control information directly from the production workloads. So to go back to the question of whether something is encrypted, we have tens of servers in AWS where data could be stored. Now you have S3 or EBSs, multiple different databases, and config has checks to see whether each of those data sources are encrypted. So we run those checks periodically, and then we share the findings with our customers through the vendor insights dashboard. When I do the demo, it'll all make more sense. For now, you know, the important takeaway is that you know, we have an online dashboard which has 140 controls, and each uh, controls could have evidences from ISO, SOC2, as well as production workloads. Okay, let's see if I can get this right. Okay, so the three things that I talked about. The first one was searching and filtering for products that meet the business requirements. So today, customers come to AWS Marketplace to search and discover products. And to make it easy for them to discover products that meet a certain security requirements, we have added two new filters. One is Vendor Insights filter, which lets you know whether the product has a security profile associated with it. This gives an indication that this product will be faster to procure. We also have added filters for certification. And in this preview launch, we are uh, starting with ISO and software certification. So you can filter, you can apply these filters, the products will get shortlisted, and you can already see that we have some great logos up here who have onboarded to our service. So you can see all of them. And now if there's a product that you're interested in, let's say security scorecard because they offered to buy me free steak, uh, when you go to the product listing page, uh, you will have a new widget, which highlights some of the certifications. And as they add more certifications, those will show up on the product listing page. And if you're a partner who's trying to sell through Marketplace, you can already see how this widget will help you distinguish your product from your competitors. If the customer is interested in learning more, they can click on the link that's available in that widget. That will bring them to, I think, I'm glad that they didn't ask me to sign in again. Uh, so it'll bring them to an overview page, but the actual dashboard, which has that 140 control, is not shared. And if you think about it, you know, the 140 controls, those are sensitive information. So we make sure that the customer and the partner has an NDA in place. And the way that you would establish that is by requesting access. So you can request access, you would fill in your information, and then, you know, the customer, uh, the partner will reach out to you to set up the uh, NDAs and then grant you access. For this demo, uh, because you know, we have a lot of folks and we are recording this, 
I don't want to open a real product because that shared an NDA. For that reason, I have set up a test product, Everest here, and I'll walk you through what you can expect to see on the Vendor Insights dashboard. So when you go to a dashboard, this overview section is available to all AWS customers. You don't need an NDA to see this information. And in this overview section, you can see the certifications that the product has. You also get information about where the data is stored, which platform it is running on, and you also get useful links to the security announcements as well as the availability status. For example, you know, here is the availability status for AWS services. So when, when I click on the link that's available on the overview, it will take me to the availability status website where I can learn about you know, how reliable is this vendor solution, you know, what were some of the recent instances, how long it took for them to recover. Again, you know, this information is public, but the challenge has been that you, know, you have to look for those by Googling them or by going to the vendor website. With Vendor Insights, we're bringing all together in a single place so that you have one location where you can find all of this information. Okay, let me get to the more exciting part, which is this dashboard. As I mentioned before, in this preview launch, we have in total 140 controls, of which, as you can see, 82 are validated, have validated evidence. The validated evidence could come from the audit reports such as ISO or SOC2, meaning that we process those reports, we pull in information what the auditor had to say about those controls, or better yet, it could be evidences coming directly from the production workloads. I also see that there is three non-compliant controls, and typically, you know, when you have a security dashboard, whenever there is something red, it could be a bad thing. But the intent here is not that it's necessarily bad. I will click through one of an exam one example. It could apply to certain products and based on your usage and your use cases, you might be okay with it. So uh, the intent of this dashboard is that to provide you all of this information so that you can complete those assessments faster and we're not trying to eliminate the need for assessments because you know, each assessment is pretty unique. You, know, you might have a different requirements than another partner who are in a, in a different industry. Similarly, based on the use case, the, the security requirements might be different. A classic example of this that you know, customers talk about often is that you, know, you could build a lot of different solutions based on storage solutions, right? You, know, like you could be using that to simply store documents or your internal uh, uh, design documents or actual customer data or better yet, use that to build an application. And these are three levels and depending on which level it falls under, the requirements might be different. So with this dashboard, you get the information you need to apply your own lens. So what can you expect to find in this dashboard? So the 110 controls are categorized into 10 different categories. Audit and compliance, data security, access management, application security. If all of this sounds familiar, that is by design. We did not want to reinvent new categories or new questions. Rather, we asked our customers, hey, send us your questionnaire that you use so that we can try to generalize as much as possible and make it available to you. That's why you know, when you click through the dashboard, nothing should be surprising and hopefully it's very useful. I wanna click through a few controls and get into more details. So when you do the assessment, one of the most important questions that come up is, hey, what data is gathered from me? Where is it stored? And who has access to it? And as you can see here, you know, this dashboard gives an answer to a lot of those questions. It tells you where is, where is it stored? How long is the data retained? How long after you unsubscribe the data is also retained? Who has access to it? Is it encrypted? That's an important question to know. So we have a question for that. Are all data encrypted, addressed, and in transit? As I mentioned before, each control can have up to four evidences. So starting from the bottom, we have the vendor self-assessment response saying that, yes, the data is encrypted at rest. You know, this is something that you would have gotten from your vendor when you send out the questionnaires. That's useful, but then you have to validate it. So that's where, to help with validation, we are providing you two additional pieces of information that we gathered from ISO and SOC2. So for example, you know, for ISO, 
uh, our systems have taken a look at the ISO section A.10.1.1, where the auditor has noted that this vendor has encrypted all the data and is fully compliant. We have pulled that information and shown here. But as I mentioned before, the holy grail is to get an uh, information that is updated much more frequently. And this is the case where you know, we are able to pull in evidence directly from workloads that's on AWS and show that you know, this vendor has all their data sources encrypted. And if you want to understand what was checked and uh, 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 what different config was checked, you can always click on info, info button and see those details. Okay, I think we are doing good on time. So I'm gonna go and look into one control that is currently marked as not compliant. So the, for the question, you know, is the data transmitted to a country outside the origin? This is a very important data from a, a privacy and data recency standpoint. You want to know if your data is going to leave the country of origin. And if you look at the response here, the vendor is saying that, hey, if you're an US customer or a customer based out of EU, we, the, the data does not leave the country of origin because they're using the different AWS regions in US and EU to store the data. But for their, but for their customers that are outside of those regions, they're going to store their data in Dublin. And this is a very common use case for SaaS solutions because you know, it, it's unmanageable to have too many different regions, so they try to consolidate. So now, if you take a, take a look at this example, depending on who the customer is and where they are located, the response could be compliant. And for that reason, you know, we focus more on providing transparency so that you can decide based on your use cases, your, 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 uh, your company's uh, uh, details to figure out whether you, know, you are okay with accepting this risk. Awesome. So just a quick recap. You know, we are launching new filters uh, on the marketplace website where you can go in and search for products based on different certification. Once you have found a product that you like, you can request access. And when, you, when your access is approved, you get to see this dashboard with 140 controls and you can dive into evidences. Let me switch over to the presentation so that uh, I can, yeah. Awesome. So, how does this dashboard help our customers? With this dashboard now, you don't have to wait for the vendor to respond to your questionnaires. You get almost on-demand access to all the security and compliance information that you would need to do your assessments. The effort is reduced. The validation pieces become easy because you have evidences right on the dashboard. And more importantly, because these evidences automatically refresh, you get continuous monitoring. You, can, you don't have to worry about whether the vendor's PCI certification, for example, has expired. You would get notified if it, gets, if it expires. So this really saves time to complete those assessments so that your, your, your business units can start using those products faster. And for our partners, as I mentioned before, you know, like I have been on the partner side you know, copy-pasting the stuff. With this dashboard, you don't have to copy-paste the stuff. You know, like your, your effort is going to be greatly reduced and the validation pieces, because we are pulling in directly from your production workloads on your behalf, you don't have to keep those questionnaires and question banks up to date. It is done automatically for you. And anytime any of this changes, we will let you know so that you can take the action to mitigate those risks. So we have a great quote from uh, JFrog here, and this is a sentiment that a lot of our launch partners share, which is you know, they make a lot of investment into making sure that, that the security of their product is strong, and they want to use that to showcase and differentiate their product. And with Vendor Insights, it really makes it easier for them to provide that transparency. In this preview launch, we have these great partners who have already created their profiles. You can go to AWS Marketplace now. You can discover the profiles for their products and you can request access to their dashboard. In fact, we have one of our key launch partners, 
Trend Micro with us here. So I'm going to bring Brian on stage. Uh, Brian and his team have been very instrumental in not only you know, helping us uh, onboarding onto this platform, but more importantly, helping us design the solution. So they're one of our key design partners. Brian, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Sai. Good morning, everyone. And uh, I hope you can hear me as well. Uh, manual and repeated. That was one of those checks, right? Um, Brian Webster, I'm responsible for product for our hybrid cloud solutions at Trend Micro. Trend Micro, not as large as AWS, but we have a lot of challenges in terms of number of customers, global presence in hundreds of countries, uh, and a lot of very particular customers who are extremely interested in the quality of security that their vendors invest in solutions that they leverage. Um, one of the uh, one of the key places where we face this challenge, especially globally, is in our Cloud One product. So this is a technology stack, a platform with a set of security solutions to help customers secure a variety of resources in their public and hybrid cloud environments. Uh, and we get a lot of interest in, because we're securing our customers' environments, how do we secure our environment? What are we doing to help our customers understand what we're doing to ensure that their data in our custody is protected at least as well as they would protect it themselves. Uh, and this manifests in a number of ways. We see hugely spiky activity. Uh, maybe if there's any salespeople in the room, uh, you might find that occasionally end of quarter, you're a little bit more active than sometimes at the beginning of the quarter. And that falls through into many activities that impact our engineering teams, impact our compliance and risk teams. Uh, we see everything from single digit to maybe triple digit RFP requests with hundreds or thousands of questionnaire rows. We see, again, single digit to maybe triple digit in a week. Uh, One-off questions, uh, maybe they're a follow-up to an RFP, maybe they're uh, an additional query in response to uh, one of our submissions. Uh, and these activities interrupt our daily activities. You know, we certainly invest greatly in our engineering team's efforts to ensure that our developers are writing code safely, that we're delivering quickly, uh, and that we've got mechanisms in place uh, to ensure high quality deliverables of our software. And when these teams are distracted, lever uh, being leveraged for RFP work or for security questionnaires, that's not where I want those teams to be focused. I would highly prefer that they're advancing the way that our teams deliver, that they're removing friction for software developers uh, to deliver securely. Uh, and if they're spending time doing this repeated work, that's not the most efficient, it's not the best thing for our organization. From, from a vendor perspective, the core challenge comes down to our ability to isolate uh, what, pro what questions are coming into our teams. Uh, we see two, two different questionnaires. They might have a thousand lines each. They probably have an 80% overlap in what content, what it, is that the, what it is our end customer actually wants to understand about our security program. But they're in different orders, they have different wordings. They might be in the same language if we're lucky on a good day. Uh, and honestly, many of these questions can be answered by work that we've already done, right? So we've invested in certifications like ISO, like SOC, PCI. Uh, we've invested in automating our internal security programs so that we understand what our posture is over time. But we don't have a way to expose those. And so what we get instead is questions that might be very, very similar to one another, often don't actually address the question the customer wants to understand, sometimes are completely inappropriate for our system, uh, so for instance, we fairly regularly might still see a uh, question related to software. Uh, you know, do you uh, provide the hash of the binary installer that you download for the server component? Well, no, my server component is in AWS and we manage its health for you. Uh, and so walking through those can be very, very tedious. It's very distracting. Uh, and then again, even when these are the right questions from the right people phrased in the right ways, a lot of times, as I showed in the demo, uh, many of these attestations can be found already validated from our existing compliance efforts. Uh, and 
Working with the Marketplace team has been amazing. They're a phenomenal partner to co-develop with, uh, amazing at taking our feedback. And the solution that they've, they've brought to uh, the Marketplace in Vendor Insights really allows us to completely flip this model. Instead of customers coming in with many, many requests, which we have to service individually, uh, pulling teams off of their day-to-day -day work and possibly uh, distracting from the actual security of our solution, uh, this gives us a way to take leverage all of our existing investments, uh, bring them to one place, present them in a consistent manner for customers to understand, uh, and to make sure that they're updated real time where appro or uh, regularly where appropriate, uh, and that we can go to our customers and we can just update uh, our attestations uh, and keep them uh, keep them in the loop for. Uh, how we're continuing to improve or maintain our security posture. Whenever we look at a feature, it's amazing working with the Marketplace team, it's always amazing working with AWS, but the proof for me is really when we get to talk to our end customers about it. Uh, feedback we've had has been amazing. Uh, customers, and especially uh, security leaders like Ed, uh, really have reinforced repeatedly that not only is this time saving for their for his teams uh, in how often they have to prepare questionnaires, go back to vendors, chase salespeople occasionally uh, for some answers, but also it gives them a consistent view because now we've got one presentation layer. Don't have one vendor answered a question one way and a different vendor answered another way for the same question, uh, but now. So this is being delivered, sometimes programmatically, uh, but in a consistent UI, all in the same place. Uh, it gives customers like Ed uh, an easy way and a consistent way to assess the security posture and the security investment being made by his ISVs or potential partners. Uh, it put them on a much cleaner playing field uh, for him to be able to understand the risk that he might be taking for an organization, uh, for his organization, uh, as he looks at a new product or a new service. I apologize that uh, my, you know, I'm not nearly as good looking as Phil, Philip or as smart as Cy. Uh, next time, I'll be sure to buy Cy a steak, uh, and you'll get a better presenter instead. Uh, thanks very much, and uh, I'll leave you with Philip. Thank you, Brian. So we're gonna we're gonna wrap up here. Um, we wanted to make sure that Cy and myself were available for questions, so we're gonna hang around after here. We very much encourage you to fill out the surveys and get more information, and we also have a booth. So there's a Marketplace booth right in the middle of the expo. It's right where the happy hour sets up at four o'clock, so definitely hang around there. We'll make sure you're covered with both knowledge and beer, if that's your thing. But thank you all very much for attending the session, and if you have questions, we'll be right over here. Thank you.